Hello and welcome to the Sharps training course. If you see yourself as a sharp handler right now or in the future, you need to understand all the aspects of using sharps. Sharps are instruments capable of puncturing, cutting or scraping body parts. These instruments are primarily used in hospitals or healthcare settings for medical purposes. If sharps handlers lack expertise in using sharps, they may endanger themselves and their patients. That's why good sharps handling knowledge is required. So what are sharps according to healthcare regulations? Sharp instruments in healthcare regulations refer to medical sharps as an object or instruments required for the performance of specific healthcare activities that have the potential to cut, prick or cause injury. Needles, blades and scalpels are examples of such equipment. Sharps are not only used in medical settings. People use them to manage their medical conditions at home, at work and while travelling such as allergies, arthritis, cancer, diabetes, hepatitis, HIV AIDS, infertility, migraines, multiple sclerosis, osteoporosis, blood clotting disorders, and psoriasis are some of the medical conditions a patient can end up with if you are not handling sharps correctly. Now we will talk about some of the sharps we commonly use. Needles. Needles are fine, slender, hollow metal pieces used to inject medication under the skin. Syringes. A medical device with a needle that is used to inject medication into or extract fluid from the body. Auto-injectors. A needle-equipped medical device used to inject medication into or extract fluid from the body. It's designed to be self-injected into the body. Lancets A lancet, also known as a finger stick, is a short two-edged blade used to obtain blood samples for testing. These are commonly used by diabetes patients. Infusion sets a tubing system with a needle used to deliver drugs to the body. Connections needles or sets. A needle that connects to a tube that is used to transfer fluids into and out of the body. These are typically used for patients receiving home hemodialysis. A sharp injury occurs when a needle, blade, such as a scalpel or other medical instrument, penetrates the skin. This is known as a percutaneous injury. Sharp injuries that have been contaminated with blood pose a higher risk of transmitting infectious agents such as hepatitis B or C and the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Let's learn about a common sharp injury called needle stick injury and how to reduce the risk of it. Needle stick injuries, or NSIs, are continuously reported in the United Kingdom. According to the Health Protection Agency's Eye of the Needle report, duty holders could do more to reduce the occurrence of these injuries by implementing safe working practices. Increased use of appropriate equipment, such as safer needle technology, may also help to reduce NSIs. Blood lancets, syringes and needles, blood collection systems, needle-free devices and safety cannulae are some of the devices and systems available. Improved education and training, as well as increased awareness of the risks and preventative measures, are all likely to help reduce the number of NSIs in the UK. Let's talk about some do's and don'ts of a sharp injury. Whenever you get a sharp injury... Encourage the wound to bleed gently, ideally holding it under running water. Wash the wound using running water and plenty of soap. Don't scrub the wound while you are washing it. Don't suck the wound. Dry the wound and cover it with a waterproof plaster or dressing. Seek urgent medical advice for example from your occupational health service, as effective prophylaxis, medicines to help fight infection, are available. Report the injury to your employer. 
Most sharp injuries occur during usage, before or during disposal, during the procedure and while resheathing or recapping a needle. Intravascular cannulation, venipuncture and injections, as well as the use of IV cannula, winged steel butterfly needles, needles and syringes and phlebotomy needles are high-risk procedures that are more likely to cause injuries. Lancets, scalpels, suture needles, razors, scissors, test tubes and even bone pieces or patient's teeth can cause sharp injuries. Clean sharps, such as glass ampoules, can also potentially cause harm. Now we will move on to learn about the risk associated with sharp injuries. The main risk of a sharp injury is the possibility of contracting infections, such as blood-borne viruses, BBV. This happens when the injury is caused by a sharp that has been contaminated with blood or bodily fluid from a patient. Hepatitis B, Hepatitis C and HIV are the most dangerous blood-borne viruses. We already talked about the high-risk procedures. People who handle those procedures are also at great risk of sharp injuries. Doctors, nurses, laboratory workers, podiatrists, radiographers and physiotherapists are all possible candidates of risk. Furthermore, ancillary staff who work in healthcare settings or handle healthcare waste or equipment, such as domestics, porters, laundry workers and maintenance workers, can be exposed to sharp injuries from needles that have not been properly disposed of by a primary user. The majority of injuries occur in wards, operating rooms, accident and emergency departments and intensive care units. Let's talk about a few strategies to reduce the occurrence of sharp injuries. Elimination. You can remove the risk by reducing the use of needles or other sharps by using needle-free IV delivery methods. Substitution. You may use an alternative approach that does not include the utilization of sharps, such as using a different route for drug delivery or specimen collection if one is available. Engineering controls. Use sharps devices with engineered safety features, like sharp disposal containers or self-sheathing needles that protect the user from sharp threats. Administrative controls. Safe work practices can reduce the risk of sharp injury. It includes always observing universal precautions, safety training, preventing needle recapping with two hands, etc. Personal protective equipment, PPE. PPE is the least effective form of hazard control and should only be utilized as a last resort. Gloves, safety glasses, gowns, face shields and other protective equipment. We have discussed sharp injuries, the causes and risks involved with them and the ways to reduce those injuries in this lesson. Bear with us for the next lesson, where we will take a look at the legislation related to sharps. See you soon.